Hello, and welcome to the Equipping Godly Women podcast, where we share the tips, tools, and strategies that you need to be all in as a Christian woman, wife, and mother. I am your host, Brittany Ann, and if you are married today, you are absolutely in for a treat, because on today's podcast episode, we are speaking with Shannon Etheridge, a best-selling author and speaker. You may know her from her book, Every Woman's Battle, that was popular quite a while ago, or she has many additional books since then, including Completely His and The Sexually Confident Wife. In today's interview, however, we are going to be talking about how to create genuine intimacy in your marriage. So if you are in a marriage that maybe isn't quite as close as you would like it to be, you would love to have a little bit of a better connection with your husband, definitely stay tuned for today's episode because we are diving deep and talking about all the things, and this is one episode that you will not want to miss. All right. Well, thank you, Shannon, so much for agreeing to talk with us today. It's my absolute delight, Brittany, and thanks for inviting me. Well, I really want to dive into this topic of intimacy because this is something that I have had so many people in the Equipping Godly Women audience email me to ask. They say, we're married, we want a better relationship with our husband, but how do we get there? And I know that this is a topic that you talk about a lot. So can you just get us started with telling us how exactly do you define intimacy in marriage? So when you're talking about intimacy, what does that mean? Well, I mean, most people equate intimacy with sexual intimacy, obviously, but I think that for women, it starts way before that. For a woman, you can best understand the word intimacy by breaking it down into syllables. In, to, me, see. We want to feel as if we are seen, that we are heard, that we are loved, cherished, respected, celebrated, all that. We want to feel an emotional bond because our heart needs to be connected to him before we feel the freedom to share our bodies. So, um, yeah, I, I have a, a really interesting job uh, teaching men the anatomy of emotional needs so that they understand why their wives aren't ready and raring to go as soon as they walk home from work. And it's like, um, you know, you need to kind of warm her up. Where she, she, she needs to let her heart go to you first before her body's ready to go to you. Well, I can definitely understand being a woman myself. I can definitely understand how helpful it is for men to understand some of these concepts. Um, but what about for us as women? Why is it so important that we also understand what intimacy is and what it looks like? Well, first of all, there's a lot of women who we, we daydream about the marriage and the family and, you know, the minivan and the home and all that kind of stuff. And we get into the thick of all of that and we lose sight of just how important sexual intimacy actually is in a marriage. And that's very unfortunate because I think that sex is really what sets the marriage relationship apart from any other friendship that we have on the planet. Um, but there are a lot of women who just fall into this pattern of uh, they feel as if they could just be roommates and it would be fine. And they wonder, why does he want sex? Why does he expect this from me? There's just really a kind of a negative mindset and especially a lot of Christian women's minds that I've been trying to undo for the past 27 years because when a woman is sexually connected to her husband, there is usually an emotional bond and there's a spiritual bond and there's just so many health benefits to being sexually active. And so I just really challenge and encourage women to press the pause button on the busyness of life and consider what they themselves are missing out on. So many times they'll say, oh, well, this is just something that I have to do for him. Uh, I don't really get that much out of it. Uh, then I'd say that you haven't hit your stride yet. You haven't found your groove. Let's find your groove and then you can recognize what, what benefit you get out of it yourself. Okay, so talk to us a little bit about this groove. What does it actually look like? Does this mean that we have to every single night be in the bedroom or every time our husband is around that we're just like fawning all over him like a teenage schoolgirl? Or what does it actually look like to have an intimate, close relationship with our husbands? A sexually intimate relationship is going to be as unique as your thumbprint. Everybody's is going to look different. So it's not like I can say, well, you need to do ABC and feel XYZ and then you'll be a sexually confident wife. But the reality is, is 
you you need to know what turns you on. You need to know what lights your fire. You need to be able to kind of enter into that space with him where the energies are a little elevated, where your blood pressure goes up a little bit, where you feel blood flow going to certain parts of your body that it doesn't normally go to on a regular basis. Um, because when that synergy and that excitement uh, and that passion is is being exchanged between a husband and a wife, there is bonding, there is chemistry, there is connection there. Doesn't mean that she wants to do that all the time. I would venture to say that if, if women are having sex one to two really good times a week, uh, that that's, that's sufficient for most people. Most people will say two to three times a week is about all that they have time or energy for anyway. So this is not an every night thing. Of course, some women would say, well, my husband does want sex every single night. Here's what I would say to that. I would say, number one, if he truly wants sex every night, then he may have some sort of pattern going on where he has used sex to fill an emotional void in his own life, and he needs to see someone like myself or a sex therapist or some sort of counselor about that. But the reality is, is that when most women tell me that, oh, my husband wants sex every night, what they really should say is, well, he wants it every night, but he gets it so infrequently that, of course, he's going to ask me every night, just hoping that tonight could be the night. And that's very different than a man who has a healthy sexual encounter with his wife one to three times a week, and he's satisfied. So I would just ask a woman, what's satisfying to you both? What pattern, what routine, what consistency can you establish where both the two of you feel as if you're getting your sexual and your emotional needs met and you're feeling that bond and you're creating that energy together in the relationship. Okay. So that sounds much more doable than feeling like we have to constantly like be this little sex kin, but okay. You know, something that's going to be good for both of us, but let me ask you a lot of men and women alike, but we're talking specifically to women here. Um, but a lot of us, we know that this is something we should do more of, whether it's because our husband wishes that we would be in the mood more often, or even for our own selves, we know like this is something that hasn't been the priority that it should be. What have you found through your experience and your research to be the biggest obstacles for women to experience this kind of intimacy in their own marriages? Well, I definitely think that it starts in the brain. Uh, women assume that what happens uh, arousal wise or passion wise or pleasure wise is what happens between her legs. And that's a very small part of it. It actually starts between your two ears. And a lot of women just have a really hard time getting their brains in gear. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. One can be poor body image. She just doesn't see herself as a sexually confident person. One can be a lot of guilt and shame, uh, guilt from maybe past promiscuity or shame from just being raised in a, in a, in a shame-based family, in a, in a family where religiosity is the culture. Um, and being told good girls don't, good girls don't. So they just have that stuck in their head. They were never told good girls do once they get the wedding band on their finger. Um, sometimes there's relational dysfunction in the marriage. And so, of course, she's not going to want to share her body or her heart with someone where there's a lot of tension or friction, disillusionment, disappointment. So I definitely think that it starts in the mind and just examining what is it that I, that I am feeling in this marriage relationship? Uh, am I happy? Am I? Do I feel safe? Do I feel content? Do I feel as if he is recognizing what my needs are so that it's not just about him and his needs? Um, but the challenge that I give to women is you can't get upset with him for not meeting your emotional needs if you're not able to teach him what those needs are. There are so many women that when I really kind of challenge them to say, you know, well, what have you told your husband you would enjoy that would warm you up, that would make you feel relaxed and comfortable and sexy, and they don't even know. And it's like, well, you can't get mad at him for not knowing how to warm you up if you don't even know how to warm yourself up. So getting to know yourself is a huge part of the process in becoming sexually confident. So... I want to ask you about some just additional like tips and tricks that we can do as women to help us to create greater intimacy in our marriage, both the sexual intimacy, but then also that emotional intimacy as well, just that feeling of being close to our husbands. But I know that this is going to vary a lot depending on the kind of background that the woman is coming out of. So I'm going to ask you this um, for a few different situations. First of all, let's talk about just the woman average woman doesn't have a lot of baggage or issues in her past just 
your you know typical marriage fairly healthy growing up but just wants to have a really good relationship with her husband wants to be closer to him what advice would you give to her or what first steps would you give to her that she could take and go to create a better more intimate relationship with her husband I would say that if you if, if there's not something in your past holding you back like sexual abuse and you don't if you're not just really wrestling with the body image bear and you don't have these voices in your head telling you what a dirty girl you are like if if you are in a normal state of mind I would say invite your husband to just spend time talking to you women spell foreplay T A L K and if if he just comes in pinching and grabbing and trying to touch that can just feel really invasive, almost abusive to some women. They really get triggered by that, whether they've ever been sexually abused or not. And it's because she hasn't been warmed up with just conversation. So having an opportunity to sit down, have a cup of tea or, you know, a nightcap, a glass of wine or something and get face to face and get eye to eye. That those are the first steps of intimacy right there, because, you know, why in the world would a woman want a man to touch her? in private parts if she hasn't even made eye to eye and voice to voice and heart to heart connection with him yet. And a lot of times I'm sure that has to do with just setting aside that time and making that a priority, which is being intentional. You don't find time, you make time. It's not called finding love. It's called making love. And so you have to make time to make love. That is a great point, and I've never heard it put that way. I'm just kind of laughing over here. <laughs> that's, that's the first time that I said that with you. Well, you can like, use that now. Reach. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so let's switch gears a little bit to a woman in a difficult marriage. Maybe she is married to somebody who isn't a good godly man. He, I don't you know, want to say anything insulting to anybody's husband, but to a woman who is married to a man where he just isn't being the man that she needs. Um, and it's really a difficult marriage. They're going through a rough time right now. What advice would you give to a woman in a situation like that when she's trying to develop um, greater intimacy in her marriage? Well, I don't want to minimize the feelings that women have when they do feel at odds with their husbands because those are very, very real feelings. But the reality is, is that most women will experience that, will report that at some point in her marriage. And so really asking yourself, is this just my own feeling in this moment because of circumstantial evidence to support a theory that he's just not being the husband that I need him to be right now? Or is this an ongoing, consistent pattern where he's reckless with his words or he's uh, explosive with his temper or he does things that make you really shut down and feel unsafe. I would say in that latter case um, that you don't want to use sex to try to build a bridge because you're basically rewarding bad behavior. And I know that the idea of like withholding sex for bad behavior is, um, you know, it, it, it's not something I would necessarily preach, but the reality is, is if a woman is just telling herself, well, I have to have sex with him anyway, whether I want to or not, whether I need to or not, just because he's going to get angrier if I don't, that's not a healthy situation. Uh, I can't imagine that a woman would feel safe enough to truly be orgasmic in that situation. And it's probably is something that she's only doing for him. And she's going to, you know, bitterness and resentment is going to develop in her heart as a result of that. I would say, to take time off of the sexual relationship and work on the emotional relationship and whatever it is that's that's uh, happening between the two of them, I would say that that's, that's priority number one right there. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because it's gonna be so difficult to have that sexual relationship when you don't have the friendship and the trust and the communication there in the first place. Which brings me to my next scenario. What about a woman who is married to somebody who is a good guy, but she has trust issues or baggage issues, all kinds of just shame and drama from her past, whether past things she's done, past things that other people have done to her. And now just being in that mindset of sex is dirty, this isn't for good girls. Um, how would you advise somebody in a situation like that who wants to be close closer to her husband, but still has all of these internal triggers and baggage. Yeah, that is, you just described the perfect candidate for my Women at the Well workshops, where over a four day span of time, I help women sift and sort and separate those layers and all that baggage that they have been carrying since childhood to look at some of those earliest messages, but to realize that your trust issues are your issues. Your baggage is your baggage and you can't, 
you can't just withdraw from your husband and then blame him. Like you have to really put on your big girl panties and be willing to look at how did I get where I am? And that can be a really scary season for a woman to look at some of the messages and life experiences and um, labels that she has put on herself or labels that other people have put on her. That can be a really scary thing. But I tell women, don't be afraid of looking at your past. Be afraid of not looking at your past because when you're not looking at your past, it can sneak up and bite you on the butt while you're trying to run away from it. But if you turn and face it, it will teach you all kinds of things and the reasons why your walls go up, the reasons why you want to keep him at arm's length, the reasons why you just don't feel you want to open your body to any sort of exchange of sexual passion or pleasure. But the reality is, is that you're not just robbing your husband of all of that that you can experience. You're robbing yourself. And so I would really encourage women to go to shannonethridge.com, look at the workshops link, and consider attending a four-day workshop of her own. Because after those four days, we, we look at fear, anger, sadness. We look at all the negative emotions that have really held her back even since childhood, since long before her sex life began. And once she learns the tools to properly process those negative emotions instead of keeping them repressed, it is amazing how she feels the freedom to blossom because we're wounded in relationship, we're healed in relationship, but it's usually a different relationship. So when she gets into a group setting of eight to 10 women and myself, and she feels so unconditionally loved and so supported and, and that we just believe in her so much and we ask her the hard questions and she, she really begins to connect some dots and recognize some bigger pictures, she literally blossoms. I love the way that Tony Robbins says it. He says, when the little girl feels heard, the grown woman will show up. And so the last day is gladness, where we look at how we can actually rejoice in our sufferings because it's brought us to where we are today. And then she goes back home to a husband who within probably three to four days after that experience, I will start getting flowers and cards and candy from husbands saying, I don't know what you did with the woman that I sent you, but I'm keeping the woman that you sent back. She is my dream lover. I didn't think that this miracle was possible in our marriage, but any miracle is possible in any marriage if you have a husband and a wife who are both willing to do the soul work to figure out what's happening with her, what's happening with him, what's happening between the two of them, what happened in our past that even brought us to this place. But I promise that there can be a much healthier future regardless of how dysfunctional your past has been. So let me ask you, you've mentioned quite a few times now the various lies and shame mindsets that women can come into a marriage with. Will you speak more specifically about and call out some of these lies that women typically believe? Just because I feel like for us as women, this isn't a topic that we talk about nearly enough. So there are likely women who are listening to this right now who have all of these lies that they are believing as truth because that's just what they've told themselves for so long. But just to hear somebody else say, hey, this is something common. This is something women hear all the time, but it's not the truth. Do you have a list at the ready off the top of your head of lies that women believe just like these? Absolutely. In addition to the whole good girls don't thing, which was a really bad thing to drill into our heads. Um, and the other one that parents often would say was, um, oh, well, why will he buy the cow if he gets the milk for free? And women just feel as if they've been compared to livestock their whole lives. And the, the, just the idea of female sexuality is not something that's been spoken positively about in the family of origin, uh, in churches, in schools. We've re we really need to put, be intentional about putting ourselves around sex positive women who can kind of give us that permission slip to become the sexually confident wives that we deserve to become. But the, the negative messages that roll around, um, I don't look like the porn stars, I don't look like the Abercrombie and Fitch supermodels, so I don't deserve to be sexually confident. Um, he expects me to swing from the chandeliers every night, that I'm not that kind of girl. Um, God would judge me if I let those kinds of thoughts even come into my head because that's lustful. What women have to understand is that the definition of lust is to go out of your way to try to make something yours that doesn't belong to you. When we're talking about exchanging passion and pleasure within a marriage relationship, that's not lust. That's love. And yeah, it starts in the brain. And uh, the brain and the body and the genitals all work together to create that arousal because that is something that we should have been taught 
in health class in junior high or senior high and in youth group or at least in a college course or something, but so few women even know what their body is capable of experiencing or what kind of pleasure it's capable of producing. So really, you know, so many of the lies are just that women shouldn't want sex. Women don't need sex. It's just my marital duty. I think that that is the saddest thing that I've ever heard. One woman even told me that her mother told her the day before her wedding, your husband's going to want to do things to you tomorrow night after the wedding, but you may as well just go ahead and do it because it's better than being homeless. I thought, oh, good Lord, what kind of pep talk is that? That is absolute craziness. Did you know that according to Jewish tradition, it is the wife's right to be sexually satisfied or else she's entitled to a divorce. Now, I'm not prescribing divorce. I'm only saying that in Jewish tradition, it's the woman's right to be sexually satisfied. How did we go from that to the Christian wife's tradition of, well, it's just my marital duty. I'll have to grin and bear it. No, it is a woman's right to be a sexually confident wife. And we are capable of experiencing so much more pleasure than the male body can experience. I know that you have at least one book. You've written so many books, but I know you have at least one book and you mentioned a conference or a session that you do. Can you tell us some more about the various products that you have for a woman in this situation? What can she come to you for? What do you have to offer? Thank you for asking. So first there was the Every Woman's Battle Series to teach women about guarding your mind, heart, and body in a sex-saturated world. So there's Every Woman's Battle, Every Young Woman's Battle for teenagers and preparing your daughter for Every Woman's Battle for moms to read with their eight to 12 year old daughters. And then they can graduate to the Sexually Confident Wife uh, which was written for the mainstream market, but many Christian women just have absolutely raved over that book because I didn't candy coat anything. It was, it was, it was just very straight talk about sexual intimacy. And then also the fantasy fallacy is about exposing the deeper meaning behind our sexual thoughts and feelings. This is part and parcel with being human. We all have them. And so just understanding the, the root origin and, and what they mean and what they're trying to tell us is really insightful stuff. Um, and then the passion principles about celebrating sexual freedom in the marriage bed uh, is a book designed for husbands and wives to read together. And then as far as workshops go, we have the Women at the Well workshop. Uh, where it's four days with eight to 10 women. We have couples at the well, where we have four to five couples come to our home in Lexington, Kentucky to go through a similar four day process, but as couples. Um, and then we also do a sexually confident couple workshop in Belize. We are doing the next sexually confident couple in uh, Placencia, Belize in May, 2020. So they can find out about all of these books and the workshops and then also individual coaching or couples coaching is something that I do either face-to-face -face, via Skype or over the telephone uh, with wives or with couples together. So I would love to hear from them. ShannonEthridge.com is where they can find me. That sounds awesome. You have so many amazing resources. I do want to ask you though, because in a topic like this, where it's something that people don't talk about enough, it's really difficult to know, is my relationship normal? Like, is this par for the course or is there a problem? If it is a problem, like, is it a small problem or is this really bad? Um, can you just speak to our listeners right now a little bit about how do they know how much help they need? Well, normal is a setting on your hairdryer. When it comes to sexuality, there is no such thing as normal. There's such a thing as healthy. And as long as both a husband and a wife would say that they feel bonded, that they feel connected, that they feel the freedom to ask for what they want and the communication flows freely between the two of them and they are fulfilled and energized and have frequent orgasms or at least orgasmic most of the time when they're sexually intimate with one another, then I would say that you're probably good. But if either partner would say they feel as if they have some unmet needs or they feel as if they can't really talk openly to their partner without them shutting down, I would say don't let that seemingly small problem become a really big problem. Because if you think that marriage counseling is expensive, just wait until you price divorce. And so oftentimes the reason that a marriage crumbles is because of sexual dissatisfaction, mismatched sex drives, um, affairs, pornography addictions, etc. cetera. Uh, over 50% of marriages or over 50% of divorces uh, cite sexual dysfunction as one of the main reasons. And so it's really not something that anyone should overlook. And no, no problem is too small to consult with a counselor or coach on, in my opinion. If it's troubling to you, then talk with someone about it. 50% is a crazy statistic. I did not realize that it was so high. Would you say... Sex and money. 
Those are the two things. Sex and money is what causes people to divorce more than anything. I guess that makes sense, but still that is crazy high. Would you say of this 50% of people who are citing sexual issues as a main or, you know, significant cause of their divorce, would you say that the bulk of that is something that could be fixed if they took steps early enough or is it ever a case of it's just something that's not going to work. Uh, I think that any problem can be fixed with two partners who are determined to put in the work. But a lot of times, well, I heard somebody say it this way lately. All right. She said, uh, it takes two people to make a relationship work, but it only takes one to really screw it up good. Uh, if, if you have a partner who's just not willing to work on it, who has screwed it up and is just not willing to, to connect with a counselor about it, that's unfortunate. Um, but I do want to remind women that um, you know, the Bible allows for divorce in the event of adultery or abuse or addictions or anything of that nature. But if you can avoid it, I would certainly recommend it because it's not something that I would wish on my worst enemy. Divorce is very costly emotionally, physically, financially, and it has ripple effects through many generations. It, it's a really painful dynamic for a really long period of time. And so why not talk with someone who can perhaps get the two of you back on the same page sooner rather than wait until later when it's a much bigger problem than it ever needed to be. Thank you, Shannon, so much for having this session with me. You bet, Brittany Ann. Thanks for the opportunity to connect with you personally about it. I love talking to women on this subject. All right, so that just about does it for today's episode. If you would love to hear more from Shannon, definitely make sure that you go ahead and check out the show notes for this episode. In the show notes, I'm going to be linking to several of her books and her website where you can find out more about Shannon and the wonderful resources she provides to help you grow in your marriage. And as always, if you have not subscribed to this podcast yet, what are you waiting for? We come back regularly to share all of the tips, tools, and strategies that you need to be all in as a Christian woman, wife, and mom. And I would love to have you a part of our community. So go ahead, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you back here again real soon.